Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle, I'm a Canadian criminal defense and firearms lawyer. You might be wondering, why the forest? Well, that's because a lot of people have asked me to comment on an RCMP press release titled RCMP Seeking Public's Help to Identify Individual Following Careless Use of Firearm. I'm not going to read the whole thing, but I will link it in the description below. But let's quote a little bit from it here. It says, The Perth Andover RCMP is seeking the public's help in connection with a video being circulated on social media that appears to show the careless use of a firearm. On July 10th, 2021, police were notified of a video circulating on social media that shows an individual firing what appears to be a restricted firearm in a public space. Police believe the video was taken in the Beaconsfield area near Perth Andover. Police do not believe anyone was injured during the incident. So there's a whole lot going on here and people have asked me a variety of questions about this. So I guess I'll just sort of dig in and start looking at some of the issues here. Issue number one that leaps out at me is they talk about what appears to be a restricted firearm. But the only detail we've got here that they've released is the single still frame. We don't actually have the video and that makes it very difficult to tell what's going on here. He's holding what seems to be a handgun and firing at what seems to be sort of a paper square, you know, some sort of target that's affixed to some sort of object. Now, maybe this is a restricted firearm, but it could, for instance, be a BB gun, which would technically be a restricted firearm. However, it's not one that uh, requires a license. And so, and it's also one that you're a lot less likely to be convicted of careless use of firearm for. It might be an airsoft gun. It might be a, a blank firing gun, which would not be a firearm at all. It might be a replica. It might be all sorts of things. So I don't know what exactly is going on there. They haven't released enough information for us to determine that, but that is ultimately going to be something that may be difficult for them to prove. If they don't have video that makes it clear, then they're going to have a very hard time proving what that is. The next question that a lot of people have asked me about is the setting. And this is a careless use of firearm charge that they've said that they're looking to bring. And the reason or part of the reasoning for that is that they've said that it appears to be a restricted firearm in a public space. So just looking at the background here, at what's going on, wh there's a few things that sort of leap out at me when I'm assessing this, because first, a lot of people have said, wait a minute, this is not a range. He's not allowed to have that restricted firearm there. And that's likely correct. I'm going to get to that. But the simple, you know, if this is illegal and we assume that it's illegal for him to be firing there, uh, that doesn't necessarily make out careless use. Careless use involves something that may cause some sort of risk or hazard. But there's a few things that leap out here. First, I see what appear to be tire treads. And so this, this appears like it's a road, possibly, you know, that might be blocked off. It might be something that's, you know, no longer in use. But in a lot of these roads that are in disuse end up being hiking trails and the like. So I don't know what's beyond his line of fire. This might be a situation where somebody could come driving down that road or could come hiking down that road. And if that's a possibility, then I think there's some trouble. There is something that appears to be some sort of backstop or some sort of, you know, thing that this target is posted on. But it's a pretty small one. And if we think about the range of possible misses, I think it would be fairly easy to lob shots over that. The other issue is I don't know what that what that backstop is made of. And that could be a really big deal. If it is, you know, a, you know, five foot high by 10 foot deep stack of lumber, then I would expect that would be fairly effective at stopping a handgun cartridge. I'm not sure what handgun cartridge could go through 10 feet of wood. But if it's simply a sheet of plywood, that's a very different scenario. Just about every, well, I, if, if assuming we're not talking about airsoft, just about everything will go through plywood. So that's a big, you know, potential concern is could somebody walk out behind him or behind this line of fire and end up potentially catching a bullet? That's, you know, that's the issue. Of course, the problem for that is going to be all of this is very much contingent on where this is happening and what's going on there. And I think that's going to be something that it will ultimately be very difficult for the Crown to prove. It's 
there's going to be a, a bit of a concern here in terms of how do they establish where this took place. And to sort of illustrate that, here I am in the forest with a restricted firearm, and you can see no magazine in it, and nothing in the chamber, action is open, so perfectly safe here. But I don't have an ATT to be in the forest, and now I definitely do not have an ATT to be on Mars. But this is Mars. So notwithstanding the fact that even if the crown actually could identify this location shown in the video, they might have a hard time indicating that this actually took place at that location. There's all sorts of ways that people can film things. Um, this is a green screen behind me. So I can be all sorts of places without uh, much difficulty, and this guy could too. They're also going to have a tough time proving when this happened, because, you know, who knows? The video quality on this appears to be not great. I take it from the vertical orientation. It's probably filmed with a cell phone, which kind of narrows the window a little bit. But normally you'd want to land it like at least within a year. And the police here have a date, but the date is on July 2021. Police were notified of a video. That's just when police heard about it. They don't know when this happened, apparently. So that's going to be a problem for them. There's going to be all sorts of issues in terms of proof. Even if they've got this video, they need to somehow be able to establish that this video is authentic, that it's a real video, and that what it shows is actually what, what's happening, that it's not edited, that there's no visual trickery going on. That's going to be a tough sell. And really what they're probably going to need here in order to establish that is somebody to talk who is either buddy in the picture or buddy holding the camera. And you know who has really strong incentive not to talk? Right, buddy in the picture and buddy holding the camera. Those two people and you know anyone else who might be present have a real strong incentive to keep their mouth shut. Certainly, you know, if if that were me in the picture and I can guarantee you it's not because he's described as, you know, a stocky build and nobody has ever described me as a stocky build. But if that were me in the picture, uh, I can pretty much guarantee the first thing I'd be doing is calling a lawyer and going, I got a problem, help. And I suspect that the lawyer would be saying, okay, here's what you do, which is nothing. Tell nobody, talk to nobody, do nothing. And if this is you in the picture, don't listen to me here. Talk to a lawyer, get specific legal advice. This is not legal advice. This is me rambling in order to illustrate a point. So, buddy, I am not your lawyer, and yeah. But the same goes for the person filming this, because they're at potential legal risk as well. Uh, they could potentially be, you know, charged as a party, as somebody who's involved in all of this. So why would they want to talk to the police? Now, the other question a lot of people have had for me, and a large part of this is going to have to be another video, because it's a long and lengthy discussion in and of itself, is the location. And one of the things that comes up here is that the police seem to have missed, or at least not discussed, the more important charge. And that is possession at unauthorized place. So this is section 93 of the criminal code, which says subject to subsection three, which indicates that it doesn't uh, apply to replica firearms. Every person commits an offense who, being the holder of an authorization or license under which the person may possess a prohibited firearm, or a restricted firearm, and a bunch of other things that aren't going to apply here because that thing's clearly, if it's a firearm, it's clearly either a prohibited or a restricted firearm. Uh, possesses them in a place that is A, indicated on the authorization or license as being a place where the person may not possess it. B, other than a place indicated on the authorization or license as being a, a place where the person may possess it. Or C, other than a place where it may be possessed under the Firearms Act. Maximum penalty, five years. So this is the offense that they charge you with if you have a prohibited or restricted firearm and you take it somewhere where you don't have an authorization to transport. Now, note one of the difficulties that will possibly come up if they wanted to prosecute this. Being the holder of an authorization or a license under which the person may possess it. Well, first they got to find the guy and it's, you know, maybe he's got a license, in which case they could charge him with this, but maybe he doesn't. 
in which case they can't charge him with this and they'd have to charge him with other things like possession of a firearm without a license. This sort of ties into the next thing, which is that a lot of people have had commentary on sort of how serious this is, how much the police should prioritize this. And I'm going to kind of break with a lot of people here because I'm going to say I don't know and the police don't know and they have to consider the possibility that this might be real serious. So people have said, hey, listen, this guy's just, you know, shooting in the woods. He's violating, you know, this law potentially, but, you know, we're not that concerned if it's not endangering anybody. And I understand that, but you got to understand this is a very serious, uh, you know, it's mala prohibitum, so it's only illegal because we've banned it. However, it's a very serious offense in terms of the penalties and the things that the court applies. So I would not say, hey, you know, go out into the woods and shoot uh, your restricted firearms because you can end up getting real serious penalties for that. As I mentioned before, I don't really know that this guy is shooting safely. We see that he's shooting at some small little, you know, thing there and that there's potentially a road. Now, I sometimes like to go hiking and camping and so forth. I like to be a user occasionally of open spaces. And I really enjoy not getting shot by somebody who is, you know, just taking their gun out for target practice. So I, I don't really know what to make of this. Uh, I would be a lot happier if that backstop looked a lot bigger. Maybe something the size of a fire hall. Okay, I have to get that dig in on the RCMP because they're going to wonder, you know, oh, when should people, you know, stop? When should people let us live that one down? And the answer is never. But yeah, I don't know that he's doing this in a safe fashion. The other thing is a lot of people seem to be assuming that this guy is somebody with a license and, you know, that he's just violating the rules on the ATT. I don't know that that's the case. Uh, this guy might be, but it might be that he just bought this gun, you know, on the street and that is, he's taken it out into the woods to test fire it in order to make sure that he knows that it's going to work because he's going to tuck it down the front of his pants and go deal drugs. And he wants to make sure that if he has to shoot somebody with it, that they're actually going to die. If that's the case, I am a lot less happy with this guy. And I would think that the police should absolutely bring him in as soon as they can, if they can, which again probably can't but you know that's a bigger deal it might be that he was recording this video to say hey i've got this gun illegally i smuggled it in from the states and i'm gonna sell it but here's video that shows that it totally works so if you're out on the streets dealing drugs hit me up because i got this gun in which case i'm again super concerned about that and so I don't necessarily fault the police here for saying we are, you know, we're looking for this guy and we really want to track him down because, I mean, this could be anything from, you know, a simple mala prohibitum, you know, we've, it's illegal because it's banned kind of thing. It could be more elevated where it's endangering the public, or it could be this guy is a real bad dude. Don't know. And so I'm not going to be leaping to, you know, to huge judgment on this without actually knowing what's going on. I know a lot of people on my Facebook page, on my Twitter, on the RCMP Facebook page are going to disagree with that and have disagreed with it. But that's kind of my thought and sorry. So that said, I think that's kind of covered everything off that I want to say on this one, at least at this point. Let me know if you have any additional questions on this one. As I said, I am going to get to the issue of the question of can you fire off your back porch? Can you fire in your backyard, etc.? But it is a thorny issue. And so I want to make sure I get it right. And it'll have to be its own video, as I said. So I've got a link below to the... Uh, to the press release. I've also got a link to my Patreon if you want to support this channel. I want to thank the people who are helping, you know, keep this channel going. Uh, some of the stuff I'm doing is costing some cash, but uh, I'm able to cover that because of support. So I really appreciate it. At the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Jason Elliott, Canada's National Farms Association, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, Ivo Nedev, the CCFR and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Sites and Arms Limited and Mark Olivier Damour. And at the $20 level, Matt Ward, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, 
and Andrew Elsich. I also want to thank everyone at the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following, as well as everyone supporting. Thank you for watching, and I hope this has armed you with knowledge.